Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to do a quick showcase and guide video of Bodicera 34 running on the Ambernic RG552. Now, I talk about Bodicera all the time. It's one of my favorite retro game focused operating systems. But usually I'm talking about it in the context of PC. And while Bodicera has released builds for other handhelds, this one here for the RG552 has gotten me pretty interested. Now, of course, there are other operating systems available for the Ambernic RG552. This device can dual boot both Android and Linux, and the Linux side, which is what Bonacera works on, also has a couple other options. For example, Jealous is in a stable build at this point, and a new version of Amberelec is in pre-release. And of course, on the Android side, you have Black Seraph's custom builds for Android 9 and 11. So we have plenty of options here, but let's find out whether or not Bonacera is worth considering. Without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, to download Bodicera, you're going to actually just go to Bodicera's website, and then down below you'll see all of the different handheld consoles that they already support. Now, most of these handhelds are low-powered systems. Most of them are actually RK3326 chip devices. Either way, the RG552 is a class above these, and so this is what makes me interested about checking them out. So all you have to do is download the file linked here, and then you're gonna want an SD card flashing app, something like Belena Etcher here. Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire flashing process. I've made so many videos about it, but more importantly, there's a really comprehensive installation guide already on their website. And I'll have all this linked in the video description below. Either way, just flash bottom Sarah to that SD card using Valena Etcher, and then you're good to go. So you'll take that SD card now and put it into the RG552. And I recommend using a 16 gigabyte card for this because the RG552 will have a separate slot for the games. And what it'll do here is repartition that SD card and then give you that initial installation of the Bodicera operating system. Now, as soon as you open it up, there are a couple things I like to fix that are just kind of pet peeves of mine. The first one is that it has background music playing right when you start it up. You might like that. Personally, I don't, so I go into sound settings and I turn off front-end music. You'll also find that there are a bunch of freeware games that have been pre-installed here. If you'd like, you can hold down the B button to bring up a menu and then delete these if you don't want to have them on here. Either way, that's all going to be up to you. The next thing we want to do is initialize that second SD card. So I'm going to take a larger SD card and put it in the second slot of the RG552. Now we'll go into these settings here and then go into system settings. And then within here, there's an option that says storage device. Go in here and then change it to the SD card. It'll show the size of the card here. And that's all the work you have to do for that SD card. Just reboot your system and you'll be back into it. Now, before we start loading up games, let's do a couple other settings tweaks here. For example, if we go into network settings, we can turn on Wi-Fi and set that up. And then we can go into updates and downloads. And within here, there will be a themes downloader. And Bodicera does a really great job with their themes. They have little preview images and everything. So I recommend browsing through here, picking a couple that you like, and then installing them onto your device. And honestly, this is one of my favorite things about Bodicera. They have some really nice and flashy themes. Now, many of these themes don't work well on the lower powered handheld, and that's why one of the reasons I thought this would work pretty well with the RG552. And yes, sure enough, a lot of these themes look really good. This one's called Electful. It's one of my favorites. But I think for today's video, we're going to try a different one. This one is the RVGM theme. Also one of my favorites, I like that it has this vertical orientation here. Anyway, I think the theme is looking good here. Let's go ahead and shut down the device, take out that SD card, and start loading it up with our BIOS and game files. Now back on my computer, when I plug the SD card in, you can see here it's named Bodicera now. And within that folder, you'll see things like your ROMs and BIOS files. So within the BIOS folder, I'm going to move over my BIOS pack. If you don't have one of these already, you can do a quick Google search for a RetroArch BIOS pack. Either way, all that stuff's copyrighted, so you won't have any links to that in any of my guides. Next, you can go into that games folder, and this is where you'll find different subfolders for each of the systems that are supported by Bodicera. And so within here, you can start moving over your legally acquired game files. And if you've ever messed with emulation before, you're probably going to be familiar with this process. As many of you know, this is the longest and most tedious part of setting up any of these retro systems. But Bodicera does a very good job of documentation. For example, within each of those subfolders, there will be a text file. You can open that up and it'll actually tell you what file extensions are accepted. And it'll give you some tips about which ROM sets to use for arcade and things like that. And it'll even tell you the same thing in French. So if you want to work on your French skills, there you go. Either way, that's my recommendation. As you move things over, just check those subfolders and read that text file and make sure that you're moving over the correct file system. If you have a game that's not quite working, this might be one of the reasons why. They also have a very comprehensive wiki page on their website as well. I recommend checking that out if you do have any issues. 
Okay, so here we are with my game library. I've already moved over all my games, my BIOS files, and I've scraped everything using the built-in scraper. And it looks great. Like I said, that's one of my favorite things about Bodicera is how nice the menus look. Now, one of the things I don't like about Bodicera is that sometimes it's not very optimized for all their systems. They're not a huge development team, and sometimes, by virtue of supporting so many different devices, some things will slip through the cracks. For example, with Game Boy, on the default settings here, it's really kind of slow, and Game Boy shouldn't be slow on basically any system, but especially not the RG552. And we'll bring up the system menu by pressing select, and choose advanced system options. Within here, I'm going to change the emulator to Gambate, and then also I'm going to remove those borders that were around the screen, those decorations. So I'll go into the decorations menu and then change the decoration set to none. And those are the only two changes I'm going to make, but as you can see, the image goes all the way up top and bottom across the screen, and now it's running at full speed. So it could have been the core, it could have been those decorations, either way, you may have to fiddle around with the settings if you are getting a system that's playing unusually slow. And of course, when it comes to 8-bit and 16-bit systems, the RG5 552 should be able to handle these no problem whatsoever. In fact, this is where the device really shines. Now a couple other tweaks, for example, I'm not a big fan of how small the Game Boy Advance screen is right here, especially because Game Boy Advance at full screen looks really good. So same thing here, I'm going to go and turn off the decorations for Game Boy Advance, and now when I start up a game, it's filling up the screen, and this just looks amazing. And I know I've talked about it several times in my different RG552 videos, but this device still remains my favorite retro game system. When it comes to Game Game Boy Advance, NES, Genesis, and Super Nintendo, I found that the combination of the screen and the really nice controls just really went it over for me. The battery life still kind of sucks, I would expect about 4 hours of gameplay at most. And the device is very expensive, especially when compared to the competition. But despite those flaws, I still use this device all the time, in fact I own two of them. Now let's move on to some of the harder systems so I can show you what the gameplay looks like here. Number one, you'll find that the Bodicera 34 build actually uses the standalone Mupin 64 Plus Rice emulator. And this is one of the best to use on these Linux operating systems. As far as I can tell, this is basically the same as the one used in Jealous as well as Amber Alec. Either way, Nintendo 64 is not bad on here. It's running at a 480p resolution, but it's still definitely playable. Now that being said, the Android side is probably going to be better for all of these high-end systems. For example, Nintendo 64 can run at 720p for most of the games. And that's just due to the sheer amount of optimizations that have happened on the Android side compared to what we've seen on Linux development. Another good example here is going to be Sega Dreamcast. This is running via RetroArch, and as you can see here, it is running abysmally slow. This is a game that runs at full speed on the Android side. And so it is a little bit frustrating, but there are a couple changes we can do to improve things. If we go back into the advanced system options, but for Dreamcast, there is an option to turn on auto frame skip. So I'm going to turn it to a frame skip of 1, and now, more or less, most of the Dreamcast games will play at what appears to be full speed. Obviously, it's skipping a frame in the process, but if you really want to play Sega Dreamcast and you don't want to move over to the Android side, this is at least an option. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it. And then the last system I want to show off here is Sony PSP. Now if I go into the PSP settings by default, I see that they've actually already turned on an auto frame skip of 2. And that makes sense because PSP just generally doesn't run very well on the Linux side on this device. And so for the layman, this actually is a pretty nice thing. You can just kind of pop in a PSP game, and if you don't know any better, it might feel like it's running at full speed. Personally, I've been doing this so long that I can kind of see those frames skipping. I'm like Neo in the Matrix at this point. And so this is another one where I recommend using Android anyway. And so to sum things up here, you know, this was my slide from the previous custom firmware video that I did a couple months ago. This one showed off all the different features of the three major custom firmwares that were available at the time. And not a lot has changed here, you know, Black Seraph now has an Android 9 or an Android 11 build available. And, as of yesterday, Amber Alec has released a new final release version. This one is called Yabasanjiro Tower. And among many other things, this now has official support for the RG552. And I'll do a dedicated video about Amber Alec here in the future. But for now, I'll just leave it linked in the video description below so you can check it out yourself. Meanwhile, Jealous has been on a tear. They've been updating the stable versions of their firmware at least once a week. And so that one is actually kind of interesting to follow, and Jealous is what I primarily use on my RG552 because I get a kick out of watching a firmware update in real time. And one last slide here, this is the performance chart that I showed off a couple months ago too. And to be honest, this is kind of the same as well. And as you can see on the left column, the higher end systems, things like Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, and above, they perform much better than the Linux side, so I recommend using that side still. 
And on the Linux side, I would say the performance is just about the same, but I would throw Botticera on another column on the right, and I would give it just about the same rating as the other two Linux operating systems. And one tangent here, when I showed off this chart initially, a lot of people had questions about which was better, excellent or amazing. And I guess the correlation was that red is bad and green is good. And personally, I didn't see it that way at all. I saw the blue as being the very best. I looked at it like the spectrum of a rainbow. But I can understand the confusion there, so just to clarify things, amazing is better than excellent. And the reason why I put amazing on the Linux side and only excellent on Android mostly has to do with the browsing experience of Emulation Station. It's just much easier to browse through games with the controls than basically any other Android front end that's available today. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick showcase and show you how to install Botticera 34 on the RG552, and then some of the performance that you could expect. So it's not really moving mountains at this point, but it's just nice to have another option available on the Linux side if you're interested. At the end of the day, I would say that Botticera Linux is probably going to be a great choice on the RG552 if you're already familiar with Botticera from the PC. But if you're not familiar with any of these, personally, right now, I'm using Jealous for the RG552. And like I said, a lot of that has to do with the real-time development that's happening right now. And there's something to be said about a developer who's focusing only on a certain amount of devices, like the Amronic devices with Jealous. It's awesome that Botticera can support a ton of them, but their team is spread out a little bit too thin and rightfully focused on PC emulation than to really give the RG552 the credit it deserves. So, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Botticera something you've put on your RG552, or is it something you are considering? Personally, I'm just happy to have so many options. It's a really cool thing about this community. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.